All right, so this is gonna be part two. Being a Tesla to a future Tesla buyer, and this is gonna be all about charging. Um, in fact, I had a recent conversation with my partner at work, and uh, she was stuck at a supercharger in Reno. There's two superchargers there. There's a 250 and a 150, and she had to miss her son's game because one of the superchargers were out. She had to sit for two hours waiting for a supercharger, and I said, "What? Well, why? Why didn't you find other options? There's other charging options. She goes like, uh, what other options? I said, you should be watching middle-aged Tesla. So you know what the other options are. So today we're going to talk about different charging options. We're going to start with the superchargers right here. Uh, we're at a 250 uh, supercharger. We're also going to talk about some other options. Over here we have a CCS charger and I recently bought a Tesla to CCS adapter. We're gonna look at that. We're also gonna look at destination chargers and we're gonna look at a G1772 adapter. So a lot of options that you have when you're charging. So we're gonna go through some of those options. He's gonna ask questions that he wants to know answers to. We're gonna walk through it like nobody knows what we're doing. Like he has no clue what's going on and he's gonna figure it out. So let's go check out the 250 Tesla charger. So first things first, these um, obviously is a Tesla supercharger and these are 250s. And the way you can tell us a 250 versus a 150 is by what it says down here on the thing. This is 1D. This means there's going to be a 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D. That means there's four of these chargers to a cabinet. This is a million kilowatt cabinet which runs four of these chargers and they're 250 kilowatt chargers. The nice thing about these 250s is that they don't share power. So right when you're pulling up to a supercharger, if you're a 250 you see 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D, this doesn't matter. This is not going to pull power from anyone else. If you're at 150, you'll see 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, 3A, 3B. Those are 150s. If you pull up next to someone who's charging, that oh. unit's going to pull power off the other unit. So it's basically going to cut both of your speeds in half. So if you're at a 150, Don't you really want to try to park not on a... If someone's on one, you want to park on a two. You don't want to park on the same cabinet because you're going to steal power from them. If there's nowhere else to park, oh well, that's too bad. But just keep that in mind. That's kind of supercharger etiquette. You don't pull up right next to someone else if you're on a 150. So to charge, you're just going to grab that handle. You're going to lift up. Okay, and then you're going to plug it in. You're going to press the button right here on there, or you can tap it. Plug her in. And let's go inside the car. Okay, explain the charging and what, what it all means. Okay, so because it's a Tesla charger, it's automatically start charging. You can see it says we got 11 minutes remaining. It says we're good, we're at 48% is our seat of charge, and it's going to take us up to 72. So it's going to take 11 minutes to get us from 72 to 48. It's you currently mean 48 charging. 48 to 72. Sorry, 49 to 72. It's currently pulling 126 kilowatts, kilowatt hour, kilowatts an hour. It's at a 506 miles an hour is that, and is that fast or is that 125 slow? is relatively slow this is up to 250 right so this is pulling about half of what it is that's going to be based on the state of charge at if we were at a lower state of charge it would charge a lot faster but again the higher the charge gets the more it slows down so you're not going to pull 250 sitting at 50 percent so but 10 minutes to charge up 22 percent that's just not bad right um, so you can pull up the charging window and the air conditioner's on. Yeah, sometimes you want to turn the air conditioner off if you want to charge faster, but um, it's it's hot today. It's 100 degrees out there, and uh, we were kind of hot outside, so we're going to leave it on. But let's take a look at the charging screen. So if you tap on that charge limit right there, that's going to pull up your charging screen. So you can see right now, that's where we're set at. That little white line, if you, if you move that arrow, that's going to change how high you want to charge to. So take that and drag it all the way to the right. This one? Yep. Boom. So now you've set it at 100% and you can see it's changed. Charge up is 100% and it's 40. gonna take 40 minutes to get there. So a lot longer. So let's bump it down to like 80. Where, where that's does it show right the there, there's 80. You can see that's 80, so 79. And that's only gonna take 13 minutes. So you can see to get from 80 to 100 is gonna take you 40 minutes, 30 minutes longer, 90. 90 is gonna take you 25. So really, like I said, if you if you could try to keep it, and it even tells you daily is between, what is that? That's 80, 80 to 90. 70, 80, 70, 60, 50. So they're saying between 50 and 90 would be your daily. I Again, I keep it between 80 and 70. So. Temperature low to 100 degrees outside. 
When you're going to go to a supercharger, if you put the supercharger in as a destination, it will start preconditioning the battery and heating the battery up. Yeah, it's 100 degrees outside, but it's saying the battery temperature was low, so it's going to take longer to charge. If we would have been preconditioning the battery when we arrived, it would have taken a lot less time. Well, not a lot less time. It would have taken less time to charge. So something that is a good trick to do, make sure you put your supercharger as your destination well in advance. It will precondition the battery, so that way you're not... Um, waiting longer because it can't charge as fast because the battery is cold so so there you see Chris Great supercharging tips and all that I'll click on it click on the okay. boots there you go okay. so it says find the fastest supercharger so three is going to be your level three your Tesla superchargers both the 150 and the 250 uh, if you click on the actual symbol it will navigate to the supercharger you can see it will precondition for faster charging if you arrive with 20% battery or less, That's it will charge a lot faster. Well, we talked about that in the last video, that the lower the battery is, the, the quicker it's going to charge when you arrive. It does say leave space between cars. Neighboring stalls may share power. Now that's only when it's a 150. And you're, and you're going to notice that because it's going to say like 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B. If there's 1A, B, C, and D, you're at a 250, you don't need to worry about it because you're not sharing power with the other stalls, only on the 150. It's just a good common knowledge. Just, it is. To just, it just is. Just leave a space. You know, sometimes people don't know that that it's a 250 versus 150, and they'll give you looks when you pull it next to them at a 250. But if you know, then you don't have to worry about it. That you're really not pulling power from them. So the last thing it says: move your car after charging. Idle fees may apply. We talked about that last time. That once your car hits the charge limit, then it's going to start charging you a buck a minute if the if the supercharger is more than 50 percent full. If the supercharger is less than 50 percent full, theoretically it won't, but you never know when two, three, or four cars are going to pull in and now you're there. Another trick you can do though is on your phone, I oftentimes will set my charge limit at 80, like if I'm shopping in a store, and then as it gets close to the 80 percent, I can bump the charge limit up on my phone up to 100 to give me more time to walk out there and move the car. So that's a little trick, playing with your phone in terms of what the charge limit is, giving yourself more time to maybe get out there or if you're eating a meal and you only need like another five minutes. So, all right, yes. What's the most you ever spent on the supercharger, cost-wise? Good question, I don't know. An estimated? It doesn't show an estimated, it shows you what the current session is and when you're done it'll tell you how much it costs. I do have on my phone a history of all the charging sessions I've done on this car and I will put on the screen right now how much that was. In fact, I'll scroll to it and show you that. So, looks like $29 is the most I paid. You can see a bunch of zeros in the beginning. That's because we had free supercharging for the first year that we had the car, which is super still nice. still apply or no? You know, they'll do incentives at the end of the year sometimes to try to get the cars pushed out. So that wouldn't happen until probably December that they maybe would offer that. And I don't know that he's offered that much. Um, so, so $29. Let's go ahead and plug. We're up to 70%. We'll unplug and let's head over to the CCS charger and try using the CCS adapter. Now it's not going to be as easy because it's not going to be plug and play like this one. Now, Tesla superchargers on Teslas, they know the car, the credit card is attached to my Tesla account. So I plug in, it recognizes the car, and it automatically charges my account. That's not going to be the test, the case with CCS. In fact, we're probably going to set up an account, but let's go try to do that. So this is the CCS combo adapter. It's the CCS to Tesla. I got this because I just wanted more options, especially with Tesla opening up superchargers to non-Teslas. Um, I don't want to get stuck somewhere. So let's open this up, check it out. First time getting into this bad boy. All right, and that is what we're looking at. So that is that is a CCS connection, Tesla connection. We're gonna plug the CCS into here and that into the car. So, looks pretty cool. Let's go check it out. Okay, so this is a CCS charger. It's a charge point station. It is a 125 kilowatt supercharger. I do have the app, um, but at first the app was not showing that this one was available. If you actually go into the app, you can find the charger you're looking for. You can click on that charger. It does say it's available. I can say start charging, um, but another option would be it looks like I could, since I have a charge point account set up with a card attached to it, and that's important that you set up this charge point account ahead of time or whatever station you're using, attach a payment card to it. But it looks like I can come down here and I can, actually, I've got to go to my wallet. There's my charge point card. I'm going to tap there. 
it's authorizing the card and it says I can plug in. So it's that easy, pretty easy, almost as easy as Tesla. I'm gonna take the charge point out. Now this, this is a J1772 adapter. We'll see that later when we go to the next station. When you combine that with this down here, this is a DC charger, DC fast charger. I'm gonna plug that into my adapter. Clicks on. It is quite heavy. And I'm gonna plug it in. And connectors are firing. It's flashing blue. Once it flashes green, I should be charging. And we're green, so let's go inside and check out what it looks like. All right, so it is charging. It's only pulling 77 kilowatts an hour. So it's, it's about half the speed we were getting, even though this is a 125, it's gonna take 15 minutes to get us up to 90. So not too bad, 312 miles an hour. That's slower than we were getting on the Tesla charger, but we are at 72% state of charge. So we might be getting that slow on the regular. So so that's a CCS, a CCS option, it does say CCS cable button not intended to stop charging use touchscreen or mobile app to disconnect okay that's interesting so let's go ahead and stop charging and then let's go unplug all right so we will unplug put our charging thing off and that's how you charge in a ccs you do have to have the adapter I think the adapter costs about 175 in the tesla store there are um non-tesla uh, you know manufacturer chargers which might be a little less but i went with the tesla charger and i'm uh, very happy it's very heavy very hefty so that's ccs charging let's go check out um not dc fast charging let's go check out some level two charging options so i've shown this before but this is my charging bag of tricks i've got my screen shade for the roof right there this is something i use for the back of the car when i'm laying the seats out but here's everything in here that you can see this is the mobile connector we'll get into. This is all of my additional plugs that I purchased from Tesla. Um, as you can see, right, you got everything. Any kind of plug you want to plug into, you've got. That's very handy to have. And then I've got my extension cord, my heavy duty extension cord. But what we need for this particular endeavor is this J1772 adapter, which is this little thing right here. Now that looks a lot familiar, right? Because that's that is the top half of the CCS connector. That is just for AC charging, not DC. This is for your DC fast charging. This is your regular level two AC charging. I also have my lock, which I bought so I can lock my adapter on and no one can take it out of my car. So let's go ahead and get connected to this thing and start charging. Okay, so I pulled up the EVCS app. And that's the problem when you're not using Tesla. There's all these different apps, different things. I have them saved in my folder with all my charging apps. So I pull up the app. There's the EVCS app. It says start charging, get started. It wants me to scan the station ID, which it did. So now it recognizes that station. It looks good. It does have my Apple Pay as the credit card to use. So we'll pick that. Go next. And it wants me to confirm on paying for it, which I will confirm. A lot more difficult than Tesla, as you can see. All right, it says start charging. So I can plug my adapter in, which I did. So this is the J1772 adapter. And I'm gonna put this little lock on so someone can't take my charger cable off. Plug it in, say start charging white says so it's preparing blue it's talking it's talking it's talking now look here it's only pulling three kilowatt an hour it's gonna take five hours to get from 72 to 90. uh i wonder and it's fully at 12 amps so that's all i'm gonna pull 12 amps so this is the level two right this is not the uh, supercharging so this is ac charging instead of dc charging and again it's gonna take five hours to get us 18 percent but this is gonna come into play like if you're at work and you plug it at work and you're gonna have plenty of time to charge up at work. Or if you're at a hotel overnight, you can plug it overnight, get your car fully charged. Um, or if you're shopping at a shopping mall. I mean, this is an option that's not gonna get you fast, but it's gonna let you charge while you're doing whatever you're gonna do. A lot of times it can go a lot faster as you get up to eight kilowatts per hour. Um, this is pretty slow at three kilowatts an hour. But in a pinch, if you gotta charge, like my partner, when she was in Reno, if she would have found uh, an AC charging, she could have plugged the car in, Ubered to the game, washed her son's game, come back and had the char car charged up and not lost two hours sitting waiting for a supercharger. So again, it's an option that you have. Uh, is it the best one? No, 
but it's another thing to do. That's why you want all of that in your bag of tricks. You want your J1772 adapter, you want your CCS adapter, you want your mobile connector, you want all those options so you can definitely find a way to charge if you need to, so. It's the, oh, it's okay, yeah, after. okay, hold on. So while we were sitting here, it jumped up to seven kilowatts an hour, it's now at 32 amps and it's only gonna take two hours, five minutes to get that 18%. So it's finally realized how fast it, a power it can pull. The car's talking to the charger and now it can get up to seven. So that's a much better option, but still not as good an option as a, as a supercharger. So the supercharger is gonna be faster. The supercharger is gonna be easier in terms of plug and play and go, uh, but you don't always have that option. And now that Tesla's opening up their superchargers to multiple types of vehicles, this may be a, something we have to find other options. Too. All right, so that's charging on a Tesla supercharger, a CCS supercharger, a level two charger with J1772. Um, one thing I didn't talk about yet is that uh, when you're looking where can I charge, you really need to use an app called PlugShare. Um, I will go and pull it up now on the screen, put it over Braden's face, you'll see him. You can see the PlugShare app is gonna show you a lot of things, it's gonna show you where there are chargers to charge, what type of chargers. Uh, if you click on the charger, it's actually gonna give you like people's reviews, like whether it's been working or not, so that way you can avoid going to one that hasn't worked for a while. It's gonna tell you what level of charging. It's gonna give you lots, that was close. It's gonna give you lots of information that you need to know how fast it's gonna charge. Um, so I really encourage you, get plug share, it's free. It's a great way to know where can I charge. So like my partner, she was in uh, Reno, she could have pulled it up and saw there were a lot of level two chargers around that she could have utilized instead of having to wait for that one supercharger. So plug share, a great app to have brain. I recommend you get that on your phone along with the Tesla app. There's a supercharger app uh, that you can add to. I just have a Tesla folder with all of your different apps because obviously this car is very computer sensitive so you're gonna need to have that information uh, at your fingertips. One thing I didn't tell you is that on the screen it will tell you if it's a 150 or a 250. Um, not that that should hold you back from using either. I think sometimes a 150 is a better option, you know, but uh, if I have a choice, I'm gonna charge at a 250 because I don't need to worry about who I park next to and I know I'm gonna get a faster charge. Um, CCS, some of them will go up to faster than 125, some of them are up to 250, it depends on where you go. That's your second best option, probably if you're looking for charging. Third best option is gonna be a destination charger. And there are Tesla destination chargers, so it looks just like yeah. that. It looks like my home wall unit, and it's got the Tesla plug, you can plug it right in. And usually those are gonna be free. Usually those are gonna be at hotels or places like where we went to the wedding up in Lewiston, yes. and that was free. So, um, and again, always look for free. If you got free, take the free, don't pay the 29 cents a kilowatt hour, so it's not the best. But having all those tools in the back of your car, I think are critical to be able to have those options. So, Anyways, any other questions about charging? No? No. Nope, okay. Well, hopefully this has been informative to you as much as to my son-in-law. Um, if you have any questions that I didn't answer, leave a comment down below and uh, we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.